Okay, hey, welcome to Rebel Tone Podcast, episode number three. I am your host, Mario of Woke Up A Rebel, and I am joined by my co-host, Aisha of Woke Up A Rebel. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm fine, actually. I'm actually having a great day. It is Saturday, May 2nd, very close to Cinco de Mayo, and uh, yeah, I'm excited about that, even though we're going to have to spend it indoors, do a virtual Cinco de Mayo party or something, you know, it is what it is, right? I don't mind that, to be honest. Yeah, I don't mind it either. <laughs> I mean, we, we would have been inside somewhere, you know, just would have been with more people, but this this will do. This will do. I mean, that's why we have yeah, uh, okay. apps like Zoom now, right? Where we can we can do things like that. Right? And yeah, that was uh, not trying to do any promo for them, but I mean, it's connecting people. So why not? You know what I mean? This is one of my first times using it, actually. Yeah, right? And, uh, yeah, so let's... Do you want to get right into it? What are we talking about today? That's a good thing you asked. <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh, we're going to be talking about the ladies of reggaeton today. And why is it important? Um, well, obviously it's important because, you know, I can be one of the few males, or maybe now it's more common for males to admit that, you know, women make everything better. You know, they make the world turn a little bit better, you know, and I'm not just saying that to win, win the female vote, but it is facts. You know? Amen, brother. The reason why this topic today and now is because um, I've been noticing something. You know, there's a lot of ladies in the game right now. You know, a lot of ladies is taking over. Every time I'm going to the new music on Friday so that we can do the, the Spotify playlist, right? I come across so much... Um, music by by latin ladies and i think it was worth mentioning for this one i'm happy you're actually talking about the latin ladies of reggaeton because now we get to learn a little bit more about their role in the industry and how they helped develop the whole genre itself as well so i want to hear what you gotta say about that all right awesome so thank you appreciate it so uh, we're going to talk about a few things, okay? One of them is going to be the three, or I, in my opinion, everything over here is based on my opinion. I'm a kid that grew up with a two reggaeton music. So these are three of the most important ladies in reggaeton, in my opinion, that we shall be talking about. And we're going to be talking about a new wave of reggaeton that's being led by a female artist. And just in general, the women in reggaeton today. Right? So... I don't know if you would know, Aisha, but who comes to mind when asked the question, uh, who is the queen of reggaeton? And don't answer that. Don't answer that yet. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get to it. right? But I want you to think about it. For those of you listening, if you have no idea who that could possibly be, well, this is especially for you. For those of you who know who the queen of reggaeton is, then, you know, you already know. And this is going to be a very interesting uh, podcast because we're going to go a little bit more and we're going to get to know who these artists are a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm going to let y'all think about it and we'll come back to that question. Okay. Who is the queen of reggaeton? And while I was researching, uh, doing the research for this podcast, I noticed that, um, a lot of the female artists that I came across are more into the pop thing. Like they're doing pop music, pop reggaeton. And the other ones are pop stars that happen to just do some reggaeton songs. You know, they're not really full out reggaeton artists. And might I mention, it might not just be fair to speak about uh, ladies in reggaeton. I think we should also, you know, do some honorable mentions of the ladies in Latin rap and Latin hip hop and stuff like that, right? One thing I noticed, uh, right, was that, that a lot of these reggaeton artists, the ladies, and no offense to y'all, this, this is just my opinion, right, as a lover of the genre. Um, this is never hating. This is just observing from my point of view. Y'all go research the artists that I will mention. I will share these names with you, um, possibly through Instagram. Make a post of it with all of the uh, all of these artists' names. But we'll try to do something like that. Um, one thing that I can say out of all of this is that I haven't really found too many uh, Latin artists, female artists in reggaeton and Latin hip hop that actually have bars. A lot of it's more on the on the lovey dovey side, you know, love songs, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's music for everyone for different situations, right? But I came across maybe, and some that I already knew, but I came across some artists, some ladies that uh, that actually have bars. Some of them being Farina, Kazu, 
Bia, Snow the Product, and you know that's just to name a few. Eve, uh, Evie Queen, of course. Um, but you know these are some of the ones that I think, in my opinion, really have bars. Like they they can hold their themselves in a cipher or a battle or you know what I mean. Like I think they can hold their ground. Yeah. I like uh, Bia and uh, Snow the Product. Right? And I believe Bia is Italian and Puerto Rican. She's mixed with Italian and Puerto Rican, so it's pretty cool. Uh-huh. And Snow the Product, she is a lovely Mexican artist. Well, Mexican-American artist, and, you know, she's amazing. I really think she... I mean, she has made music with some of the heavyweights in hip-hop right now. Right? And I, if I'm not mistaken, Tech 9 is the artist that basically put her on. Right, so shout out to Tech Nine for that. Oh, very nice. Right. Um another thing while researching this topic, right, is it was very interesting. Like when you go down the rabbit hole researching, it's very easy to just keep going and going and going. <laughs> yes, of course. It was just such a trip because I came across um a subgenre of reggaeton. I don't know if this is official, but I keep seeing the name uh, Neo Perreo come up a lot. It looks like the leader of this movement happens to be a lovely lady that goes by the name Tomasa del Real. I remember actually seeing her or hearing her name uh, a few years ago. I would say maybe two, three years ago. And DJ Blas was actually um, promoting her stuff. I think he made a few beats for her. Okay. Have I told you about her? No, I'm just hearing of her. Yeah, so Tomasa del Real, um, she's Chilean, so shout out to all my Chilenos listening. She's a Chilean artist, and she is the queen of Neo Perreo. What does Neo Perreo sound like to you? No, it is not the Matrix Neo. It's, um, but it, it could be in that realm, you know? Like, you know that look, that vibe, that grungy vibe of the Matrix movie? Like, it had, like, this goth feel to it. Just imagine the Matrix with a reggaeton soundtrack. That, right, that would suit the movie. Not just, like, like that Yankee stuff. Like, I mean, the type of reggaeton that could suit a movie like that. You would think a little darker, right? A little more electronic. Well, that's basically what uh, Neo Perreo um, basically is, right? Um, in the most ignorant way <laughs> that I could explain this, right... And I'm, this is just coming from somebody who's just learning and wants to learn more. And I'm hoping that y'all will want to learn and look into this a little bit more yourselves. You might actually end up liking the music. But the most ignorant way that I can explain this is by saying that it has a few artists that cater to the goth, industrial music type of audience. Right? It was a subgenre that was birthed in L.A. And yeah, like I mentioned, Tomasa del Real is the person who is leading this movement. Like She's the one who just really pushed it. She believed in it. In, in her style, and they just people started picking up on it. Dio Perreo um, is considered to be the cross between the digital, digital era with the influence of reggaeton artists. It's cool, right? Still confused about what this music is? Very. No, I understand. It's like if a goth person wanted to, you know get into a more Latin kind of vibe, that's the exact genre they would go to. They have an option. Nothing wrong with that. Right. There's something there for everybody. Exactly. Now, with that said, um, if there's some of you that are still confused, uh, what can I say about the movement? The movement, I can say that it's very welcoming to all kinds of people. Like, I don't think they discriminate on anybody except if you come into one of these events thinking that, you know, like you're judgy. Don't be judgy. You know what I mean? You get me, fam. And that's what I'm thinking. Um, it's where, you, you know how reggaeton, like it has the glitz and the glam to it? Like all the, the bling and, and all of this, right? Neo Perreo is more on the rebel side, right? It's more on the, I will not conform to the norms of society, <laughs> right? And basically, you know, like the hip hop of the hip hop of today, artists like Lil Uzi Vert, Trippy Red. You know, people with that particular look like the children of Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah. Right? The children of Lil Wayne is basically, if they were all Latin kids and they were into reggaeton, that's who listens to this stuff. 
That's who's into this. That's scene. an interesting if, thing. Yeah, it's cool, right? Um, reggaeton used to be considered underground, like the underground music, right? It was rough, it was raw. Reggaeton is no longer so much that. No, it's in right? the limelight. Is the... Sorry? It's in the limelight. Right? So we can't even say that it's it's underground anymore because now it's all about... It's not about the struggle so much. It's more about now, like, having money. You know, it's really changed. Neo Perreo, I would say it's... Uh, like I said, it's it's the opposite of the glitz and the glam, you know, and it has elements of industrial music, little R&B, ambience, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff just mixed into it. When you hear me say, like, stuff like electronic music or industrial sounds, I don't mean mumbaton, because that's different. That's, like, more EDM side of um, reggaeton. But this neo perreo stuff, it's more like... How can I explain this? Um, to you, I can tell you like this. It's like they're using serum, serum presets, but they're using like in a very minimal way, right? It's not the exaggerated like dubstep sounds. It's more like the, I would say more like lo-fi, a little bit more ambient. Like a softer kind of sound. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's very different. So if reggaeton had an underground scene now, Neo Perreo would be that, in my opinion, right? And it's pretty dope that a woman is leading this movement, right? So there's a lot of women, believe it or not, there's a lot of women in this subgenre of reggaeton. A lot more that are pretty active um, uh, in that underground scene. Mm -hmm. right? There's a lot more females than you see in the mainstream right now. You know what I mean? So if you're still confused about what Neo Perreo is, people, I would say for the older crowd, it's like Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson meets the reggaeton. Because there's a lot of, um, I don't want to bash, I'm not trying to bash the genre in any way, but there's a lot of satanic elements, I think, that I saw, that you can see in the videos. I'm not even, you know, making this up. You can check out some of these artists. But you see some of the symbolism in the videos and it's not my cup of coffee or a cup of tea, well, however you say that. It's not my cerveza. But, yeah, it's it's different, you know. Like, I like Nine Inch Nails and, and some Manson tracks, you know, but do I listen to them steady? Nah. A lot of this music in the Neo Perreo um, hey. subgenre, a lot of it is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Researching it, a lot of it slaps. But one thing I noticed that they use heavily in it is auto-tune. Why is that? I'm not a fan of... Maybe they don't have engineers that can really use auto-tune. Or maybe that's just what they like, right? It's a very consistent sound mm -hmm. in the vocals in different artists of the genre. So, you know, maybe that's their thing. Okay. It's just the style of the genre. Then. Yeah. 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 So the music sounds like reggaeton with more electronic sounds, but not like mumbaton at all, right? Heavy use of auto-tune. And somewhat dark, but could also be considered misunderstood, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting genre of music. And the only reason why we went on so long about it is because um, Tomasa del Real is the queen of Neo Perreo. So shout out to her. Shout out to all the artists that, um, that are involved in the Neo Perreo movement. And I really hope that, you know, y'all keep progressing in the scene and keep supporting Say her it. name one more time. Tomasa Del Real. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm pretty sure it'll be easier to spell if I, you know, say it like that instead of Tomasa Del Real. Like, mm -hmm. Right, so that was a bit about this new movement and its relevancy to this episode is that it's being led by a woman. Okay? So now we're going to go on <laughs> and uh, there's just so much info so we're just going to try to get through this real quick. You know? uh all right, that's it. Right, so I'm going to mention the names of some of the reggaeton artists and Latin hip-hop artists, right, that are in the scene, that have been in the scene. Some of them paved the way. And, yeah, if there's names that I forgot to mention, um, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So please drop some names in the comments that you think that, um, are, uh, that we should give a listen to, uh, whether they're current or from back in the day, okay? Now... From what we understand from the previous two episodes, reggaeton started 
well, as Spanish reggae in Panama, went over to Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico went to the U.S., from the U.S. it went to Colombia, and it went everywhere in the world, like everywhere in the world now. Okay, so that's where you're going to hear names from everywhere. And worthy mention, one thing I noticed about the Neo Perreo movement is that a lot of the artists are actually South American, either from Chile or Argentina, um, the majority of them, okay? That's what I noticed. Why? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Y'all tell me. My people from Argentina and, and Chile, y'all tell me if you know any of these names, okay? So we're going to start off with some names. Evie Queen, Francesca, Lisa M, La Sista, La Hill, Glory, Camille, Nati Natasha, Becky G, Carol G, La Factoria. They were actually a Panamanian group, but they kind of disbanded. But Demfra of La Factoria kept going. Kazu from Argentina. Uh, Rosalia, I know a lot of people know Rosalia. She's uh, blown up a lot. She's an artist from Spain. Um, Tomasa del Real, right? She's a Chilean artist that I just mentioned that is leading the movement of Neo Perreo. Sassy, I don't know if this artist's name is Sassy G Girl or Sassy Girl. Lara Artesi. Mala Rodriguez from Spain. And she's not new, but I know a lot of you, if you listen to a lot of Latin hip hop, you'll know La Mala Rodriguez. Anita, she's from Brazil, but she's very talented because, you know, she can do music in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, right? Mm -hmm. So shout out to Anita. That's Yeah. I don't know that. We have Paloma Mami. She's a Chilean-American, if I'm not mistaken. And she has a new video, guys. Uh, People, she has a new video uh, for a song called Goteo, G-O-T-E-O. And it's like a video game theme. It's a new video. I actually think it's cool. You saw it, right? Yeah, I did. It's pretty cool. Um, here's one that I know a lot of my old school people like myself will know is uh, Lorna. Lorna's from Panama, and she has the classic song Papi Chulo that she did that was produced by El Chombo. So that was a big one. Um, Farina, she's a Colombian artist, actually. But looking into her, um, I believe that she is of Peruvian and Chinese descent. Right. Yeah, and she's actually pretty cool because she got signed by Rock Nation. Yeah, so look out for Farina. She actually has some bars. I'm not a huge fan of all her music, but some of the, some of her tracks are, are pretty dope. She has bars. Um, we have Bad Gyal from Spain, Miss Nina from Argentina, Amara La Negra, Cardi B, Bia, Melly, Snow the Product, Kim Loaiza, Dana Paola, Mariah, Sofia, Sofia Reyes, and Mestiza. I know there's probably a whole ton more mm-hmm. that I missed, but... Like I said, leave a comment down in our YouTube channel, which is Woke Up A Rebel TV on YouTube. All right. So those are some of the names of uh, a lot of the reggaeton artists and Latin hip hop, right? That um, that have been making names for themselves. You know, it's not easy to navigate around this genre that's mainly male dominated, and just the content of the music is always about. Um, you know, the the males are, are, you know, the ones at top, you know, in power, you know. Exactly. It's a very machista um, genre, or at least it was. That's up for debate. There's a lot of names, right? There are a lot of things. Some of them I haven't heard, but um, most of them I have, and all those females are pretty bomb. So, so there's, a, there's three artists that I really wanted to speak of briefly. Right, that deserve the mention, right? Now, we have three artists. No, 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 okay. All right, so we're, I'm going to mention three artists in particular that I believe paved the way for all of these ladies that now have this opportunity to participate in this genre. Those names are Glory, Jenny La Sexy Voice, and of course... Evie Queen. Now, the reason why those names in particular are actually important is because we hear their names a lot in in the old school reggaeton, like, you know, before 2010-ish, right? Around that time. We heard their voices a lot, but a lot of people don't know who they are and they don't know their names. And it's not fair to them. And there's a reason why we didn't really know them. And we're about to get into that briefly, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first name 
right, that uh, that came up that is worthy of the mention is Glory. Glory, her real name is Glorimar Montalvo Castro, and she was born in 1979 in Puerto Rico. Um, she is actually that voice that we'd always hear in some reggaeton songs like Dale Don Dale, Baila Morena, and the legendary song Gasolina. Glory. Glory is actually a very important name in this genre because of that facts that I just mentioned and a lot more. She was in a lot more songs. Now, the thing about Glory is that she was uh, an example of the ill treatment of women throughout the history of the genre of reggaeton. And I'm not here to bash reggaeton, but we got to address the elephant in the room. Ladies do not, they, they're not treated very well according to the genre and according to the music. And Glory was used as the female voice of sexual submission that would only respond to the orders of the male singers. That's really what she was doing. In all of the songs? Male, sorry? In all of the songs? For the majority of the songs that she was a, a feature on, it was usually uh, the male would be saying something and she's responding to their... Um, sexual advancements. Right? Um, in the beginning stages of the genre, women were hardly ever referred to simply as women. They would either be called yales, mm -hmm. girlas, perras, gatas, hardly ever just mujeres. <laughs> it's sad. It's not even funny. I'm just laughing because it's just ridiculous. Right? When we really think about it, we don't think about these things, right? Growing up. In a fair world, we would consider that, you know, Glory is a pioneer of the genre of reggaeton, but she never got that respect, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why we're here to give her that recognition. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Now, the thing about her is that she didn't necessarily, like, I wouldn't say that she made it far, but she is recognizable, right? Because she was also in the movie Talento de Barrio, um, the Daddy Yankee movie back in 08, right? She had, she had some lines, you know? If you knew who she was, you would recognize it, right? Now, the thing about her is that she actually came out with her own project, right? Uh, I think she came out with at least one or uh -huh. two albums. But the thing about her is that she was trying in a time, right, in the early 2000s, around 2000, I would say five-ish. You know, she was trying to come out with her okay. own music and she was trying to compete with the males in the in the industry, right, in the genre of reggaeton. So, for example, she came out with a song um, where it was very... Um, it wasn't very ladylike, quote unquote, during that very conservative bias. You mean time. it was vulgar? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm like, <laughs> considering what we're listening to these days. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, the example I wanted to use was uh, she had a song from her first album called La Papola, and that's a slang term for vagina. Basically, in the song, she's saying that. Just telling the male in the song to chill and give the popola a rest. Yeah. Basically, that, that song in particular got her censored in Dominican Republic. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What? And um, if, I'm not, if I'm, I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if she got censored and banned in a few other countries, right? But why? Um, because... They didn't think that ladies should be speaking this way, especially in Spanish. I personally think everything sounds a lot worse in Spanish. <laughs> but that's just me. But she had every right to, you know, she was good. She was a good artist. She had every right to be up there with those guys. But it was very, it's very biased, you know, because like the, the same year or the year before, um, Treble Clan came out with a song where they say, agarrala. Pégala, sótala. It's literally saying grab her, hit her, whip her. <laughs> but that's all over the radio. You know, so it's very biased. And it was very unfair for her because, you know, she paved the way, you know, for the ladies to be able to say whatever they wanted in reggaeton. In my opinion. Now, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody should be giving her a shout out every chance they get, in my opinion. Um, people in places of power clearly felt that a lady shouldn't express herself that way and that, you know, only the men can sing about things like that, you know, things that they can 
things they want to do to women on the dance floor and in the bedroom. I personally don't think that's fair. Mm-hmm. Backwards thinking. Yeah, so unfortunately, she didn't have the same success as other women in the genre during her time. And her follow-up product, projects didn't do so well. But on a positive note, around 2009, she became a Christian. Came out publicly about it in 2015. Has since made a song about her experiences during the time, you know, that she was in, I guess, in the industry, you know, just the hardship she went through. And now she goes on social media on her, on her the platforms that she's on, and she just talks about faith and talks about positive things, you know. So even though she's not active in the music right now and she didn't get to live her dream the way that she wanted to, hey, you know, she's doing something positive with her life. And yeah, shout out to you, Glory. God bless you and really hope that, you know, you're doing whatever it is that you feel God has called you to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, we're going to talk about another very important voice that um, we believe, well, I believe, that Glory paved the way for her. And this voice is in a lot of songs. I used to think Glory was the only voice in all of these songs, but it turns out that there was another voice. That voice is Jenny La Sexy Voz. Her real mm-hmm. name yeah, her real name is Jennifer Marie Ramos Davila. Um, she's been the brains behind the hooks of a lot of the big reggaeton songs that we know today. One of the main ones being Rakata. And she's the voice that says, Papi, dame lo que quiero. Pause. But, you know, you know, she's the one that says that in that song. She says it in like a whiny way, you know. And it's like a response to what we seen is saying in Rakata. So check it out. Now you'll know that that's Jenny La Sexy Voice. Other songs that she's been a part of, Contacto by Yavia. Some of you might not know him, right? But he's actually in uh, Bichi Yal, the new song by Bad Bunny. And, you know, he's a, he's, you know, he's a secret weapon, I think, in the reggaeton game. He didn't really get the exposure that he deserved. But anyways, Jenny La Sexy Voice. She was also in that song El Palo by Alexis Ifido. This is one that really got me. I was very happy, you know, just to hear the name of this track because I love this song. She's the female voice in Noche de Travesura by Hector El Father. I like that song. Yeah, you know, it's dope. Um, she's the female voice in Paleta by Wisini Andel and Daddy Yankee. She's also the female voice in SOE by Alexis Ifido. Frikitona by Plan B. She's the female voice in that. She's been in over 80 songs, people. So this list could go on and on and on. But check her out, Jenny La Sexy Voz. If you want to find out what other songs, you know, you remember from, you know, back in the day, if you want to go back and find out who that voice was, it could either have been Glory or it could have been Jenny La Sexy Voice because La Sexy Voz, because they're the ones killing it. Um, one thing that was, you know, like I, I went through a few articles and I don't know if I've quoted them yet, but I, most of the information that I got, I got it from Billboard.com, Red Bull Music, uh, sorry, Red Bull.com and remescla.com right so shout out to all of those uh, journalists that put these articles together that i got most of this information from that wasn't off the top of my head right because you know just going back and remembering a lot of the stuff was fun for me right doing this um, research for this podcast right so the elephant in the room about um, jenny la sexy voice la voz is that uh, she pretty much self-objectified herself in all the songs that she was participating in Reggaeton basically needed a female response to the sexual fantasies the males were singing and rapping about. The narrative of sexual subjugation and dominance. It was the basic formula of reggaeton. They ran with it. It worked. You know, we can't judge reggaeton because it was depraved or vulgar or whatever. Because most of commercial music at the time and even now, it's still that. Right? So we can't hate on a genre of music just because it's not in English. You know what I mean? But... Everybody's doing it, so we can't single them out and say, oh, it's too vulgar, you know, especially for the ladies. Oh, the ladies shouldn't be rapping or singing about these things. Forget that, right? Everybody has equal rights. Um, on the business side of things, and, you know, this is for people, artists, you know, like, check this out. Jenny, La Sexy Voz, she had so many, like, over 80 songs, okay, she, that she was on. If you know your, yeah, 80 Right, so if you know your stuff, you'll know that um, you gotta get it on paper. You know all the splits. You need the, the split sheets. You know so you can get your cut. You can get your royalties. Unfortunately, it was a different time, and Jenny 
probably didn't know. And she didn't get the same credits that Glory got. Because Glory, she at least had featuring Glory, you know, on the vocals and stuff. She got her credits. But unfortunately, uh, Jenny Love, Sexy Voices did not get that. No featuring Jenny on title on track titles. Uh, Jenny was only paid for the time that she put into the studio. But she never received royalty payments. Yeah. You know, and according to a company like ASCAP, uh, and most companies, right, that collect the royalties, you got to have your name in the songwriting credits or better yet, registration of the song so you can collect royalties, right? So it's very important that we know about these things for all of you singers and rappers. So uh, there's this is anybody two that different music, ones. Sure, you know, everything is done properly and you get your name on everything, whatever it is you contributed to, even if it is a little... Um, you know, like what these ladies were doing in these songs, they would say like two, three lines and throughout the whole song, but you still deserve to get paid for that. Right? But shout out to Jenny La Sexy Voice. Um, she, the last that I heard from her, um, she actually had done a song back in 2016 called Hasta Que Lo Pierde with Joan Seta and Mestiza. Evie Queen is actually the person that inspired her to pursue her own career in music as a solo artist. You believe that? Yeah, it's pretty dope. So she learned all about Evie Queen's hardships, everything she had to endure in the industry to be accepted, you know, by her male colleagues. Can you imagine that? Like, can you imagine, like, in, in the dance hall scene back in those days, Beanie Man, all of these guys, and then you had somebody like uh, Lady Saw. Can you imagine what she had to deal with in that time? Right? So... You know, Jenny, Jenny, La Sexy Voice, she mentioned a lot, like, you know, the guys would always be trying to hit on her in the studio and stuff like that. And it got to the point where it's like, they finally got the point that she was not into them. That's when they started, you know, let, letting her be and just come in to record and do her thing. You know, so she respected Evie Queen because Evie Queen made it to the top ranks and is still there, you know. And she knows what she had to endure during that time just to get respected. Right. So after, you know, the weird time that she went through in the, in the industry, right, in 2011, she linked up with a producer that I think has made a huge impact in reggaeton as well. His name is Boy Wonder. Not to be confused with Boy Wanda that works with Drake. I'm talking about Boy Wonder from The Chosen Few. If you want to see who this is, it... two different ones, yeah. This guy on Instagram is Boy Wonder CF, the letter C and the letter F, right, Boy Wonder CF. He is actually responsible. I found he's behind... The production team of the album where Reggaeton Latino is on. That's from the Chosen Few um, album. I'm, I think it's from Chosen Few Part 2. Right? So, or I could be wrong about that. But yeah, it's, it's in one of the Chosen Few. And it's an amazing al uh, couple of albums. Part 1 of Chosen Few actually comes with a DVD. It gives you the whole history of Reggaeton. It's amazing. So, shout out to Boy Wonder of Chosen Few. But yeah, Jenny La Sexy Voz, she linked up with him. She co-produced a song called Latin Girl by Cosco Yuela. And it blew up. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a remix of it or a, a different version of it by Justin Bieber called Latin Girl. And I think that's during the time that he was dating Selena Gomez. I didn't find an official version of Latin Girl by Justin Bieber, but it does, it does exist. Go look for it on YouTube, people. You know? What do you think so far? I want to take in all these females doing great things but not getting the recognition they deserve. Probably me the wrong way, but you know what? As long as we're bringing awareness to it now, people at least know who they are. Exactly. So last but not least, I'm going to come back to that question that I asked at the beginning of the podcast. Who do you think is the queen of reggaeton? From all the names that I just mentioned. Unless you don't know. Do you know? Honestly, I don't know. I would say Evie Queen. Yeah? Hey, yeah. That's dope. that's dope. Well, as a matter of fact, you are right. Right in the sense that I think, and I'm pretty sure nobody would argue, that Evie Queen is the queen of reggaeton. Oh, yay. The queen of reggaeton's real name is mm -hmm. Marta Ivelis Pensante. She was born in Añasco, Puerto Rico in 1972, which was the time that she blessed the world with her presence and her energy. Um, 
what can I say about Evie Queen off the top of my head? Off the top of my head, she always had fly outfits. Sometimes pretty crazy outfits, but she always made sure that everybody knew that she was in the room. Mm-hmm. And her nails. <laughs> her nails. If y'all think Cardi B was like the one doing all this crazy stuff with the nails, nah. Evie Queen was, she probably got that from Evie Queen, to be honest. You ask any Latin kid, especially, you know, Caribbean descent Latin kid, who their favorite Latin rapper is or whatever, most of them, for the most part, will say Evie Queen. If y'all don't know what I'm saying, Ivy Queen. But in Spanish, we would say Evie Queen. And Evie Queen has done a lot of crossover tracks. She moved to New York, right? She was born in Puerto Rico, moved to New York, and that's where she got into writing music. She would, you know, participate in talent shows and stuff like that. And I guess, you know, she was started developing her craft during that time a little bit. Went back to PR, Puerto Rico, decided to pursue music hardcore, right? She met DJ Negro. Shout out to DJ Negro. He is actually, you know, this guy is one of the pioneers of the movement of the reggaeton scene in Puerto Rico. He gave so many kids a shot, you know, including Vico C. He started out, he started out with Vico C. Um, so he put Evie Queen on The Noise Project, right? Go, go check out The Noise on Spotify or whatever platform that you listen to your music from. But The Noise, it's a very important um, series, you know, in reggaeton. Right? It's, it's huge. Um, her first successful song was Somos Raperos Pero No Delincuentes. What does that mean? We are rappers, but not delinquents. It's a very, you know, understandable thing, right? But hip-hop and reggaeton are not that different in regards to the way that the general public viewed it, right? So it was pretty cool to think, to know that there was a lady already, you know, getting into the scene. You know, this is early 90s, mind you, right? Uh, she was in the right place at the right time. You know, Lisa M. and Francesca, who were some of the first Latin hip-hop artists, right, out of Puerto Rico, they were unfortunately starting to decline in their popularity, you know. So when Evie Queen came out, she was a refreshing voice, a refreshing vibe, you know, raw. Sorry, if we consider Eve from Rough Riders as a pit bull in a skirt, same thing goes for Evie Queen. I did not know this. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Pretty, pretty dope. Um, so yeah, her first su- successful song was Somos Raperos Pero No Delincuentes. Right place at the right time. She has 10 albums, people. 10 albums and 7 EPs. Okay? Yep. So in 1997, her first album came out. It was called En Mi Imperio, which means In My Empire. Pongan Atención and Como Mujer went gold and platinum. Very nice. And they were songs that were actually... Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember which salsa artist was that helped her with uh, those songs. But Diana Torres, who was actually Mark Anthony's um, first wife and also Miss Universe at one point, uh, she she's also a singer and she helped Evie Queen with uh, with her first album. Pretty dope, right? Right. So Evie Queen, she would go to rap, do rap battles in Panama, you know, and. Um, you know, she would be in, like, Panama versus Puerto Rico type of rap battles. You know, like, she would travel for this stuff. She won awards, including um, Favorite Artist Chosen by the Youth in 1997, which is by Artista Magazine. And I'm guessing at that time it was a big deal. I wouldn't know I was in grade five. <laughs> grade five? Yep. Uh, oh, wow. Her debut commercial song was In My Zone with Wyclef Jean. And we all know Wyclef. Wyclef is a legend, crossover legend. Uh, you know, one of the main guys, uh, well, one of the three members of the Fugees, right? And now, let's go back to me. You know, my experience, I know <laughs> it's not what everybody's here looking for, but, you know, my experience with Evie Queen, it's, it's dope because I never had this prejudice towards um, female rappers. You know, it just didn't exist with me because I've, I grew up with it. I grew up hearing Evie Queen, right? I grew up hearing Foxy Brown. I grew up listening to Lil, Lil Kim, Queen Penn, right? It was, it, I had no reason to hate on ladies doing music, right? And so I, I started really listening to Evie Queen uh, when, her day, when, uh, when her album Diva came out. And that was around 2003. Quiero Bailar is in this album. Quiero Bailar is my favorite song by her. 
right? And I learned recently that Looney Tunes partly produced that song, which was pretty sick. It was with DJ Nelson, Looney Tunes, and Noriega. Papi Te Quiero and Guia Era are also on that album. Diva went platinum, right? So it was pretty dope that that was on there. And uh, Tuya Soy is also on that album. And the reason why that, that song is so important is because it's an empowering song for women, right? And it's about how women are to be respected, you know? It's a very dope song. Tuya Soy, T-U-Y-A-S-O-Y. You could actually look up that song by Evie Queen and also look up the English translation for it, the, the lyrics. And it's pretty dope. I know it's very empowering, especially for the time that she was writing those lyrics. In, in the Latin scene, that wasn't really happening. Uh, in 2007, her album Sentimiento debuted at number four in the Latin charts. Right? So that was huge. That was huge. She has huge accolades. You know what I mean? Especially as a lady. Um, in my opinion, she's always been a positive influence on women. Her songs reflect a lot of what she's been through, and she's always been an advocate for the respect of women. Right? She never came off as trashy, and she proved that she can compete with the males in the game at the time. She had raw talent. That's why she made it so far. Oh, yeah. Raw talent. Her voice is recognizable. Like, I mean, some would say that her voice is manly, more masculine, but I don't think so. I think she, you know, she just has that rough attitude. She has a deep voice when she talks. Like, not... You know, not deep, deep, but you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not a high voice either. She has bass, yes. Yeah, bassy voice. Yeah, she has bass in her voice. That's all it is. Right? So, Evie Queen, like, there's... I could have... We can do a whole episode about her. You know, but we just wanted to shine light on some of the most influential ladies in the reggaeton scene. We mentioned Glory. We mentioned Jenny La Sexy Voice. Sorry, Jenny La Sexy Voice and Evie Queen. So what do you take from this? I take that there's a lot of females I need to listen to. There's a lot of females that influence the current ones that are popular today, but you wouldn't know it because, you know, you don't hear much about the old artists, but, sorry, not old artists, the older artists from the earlier generation of reggaeton. Right? So today's climate with reggaeton, right? We have Becky G, Carol G, Nati Natasha, um, Farina. These are some of the biggest ones right now that are just in your face all the time, right? Uh, Anita, uh, right? Like these are some of the biggest ones uh, that are in our faces all the time. I personally don't think any of them would be where they are right now as bosses. If it wasn't for Evie Queen. And the other ladies, of course, that we've mentioned in this podcast. They all paved the way for these ladies. And for them to be able to have, you know, um, some respect, you know, amongst the, their male colleagues. Like right now, you see Nati Natasha, you'll see Carol G, you know, doing songs with all of these guys. And they can be talking about some questionable things, but nobody's... Nobody's hating on it. You know what I mean? Like, the ladies look like they belong where they are now. They have such confidence. Not that they didn't always, but you just see it in them, you know? And I don't think that this industry is for the ladies that are faint at heart because they're going to have to deal with all of these dogs first. You have to be a tough person. You have to have a tough personality and just... You know, have that kind of character where you won't let anyone push you around and you know what you want and you'll go after it. And, you know, you can't get swayed by anybody else's opinion of how they think you should be or act or thing look like. You know what I mean? So, no, it's not for the pain of heart. you got to have your own sense of power to be able to push through that kind of industry. Right? Well, that's pretty much it. Evie Queen has put out a lot of projects. Go check her out. She just put out a song uh, about three weeks ago. Um, I can't remember right now what it's called. But just go on YouTube, look up Ivy Queen, and you'll see her most recent stuff. Like, she's still active, guys. She's not. She hasn't gone anywhere. She's still here. Right? So, thank you so much for joining us and talking about the ladies of reggaeton. I really enjoyed this. 
I enjoy listening to ladies in reggaeton. Why not? It's, you know, it's dope. Yeah, they deserve their credit. They're part of this genre, too. And we gotta let the world know who they are. Right. So, for those of you that uh, missed the names that I mentioned, I'm gonna post them either as posts on Instagram and or in the description on our YouTube channel, which is Woke Up a Rebel TV. If you want to avoid all of this stuff that I'm saying right now, just uh, check out our website, wokeuparebel.com. On Spotify, we have a podcast, which is where you'll be hearing this. <laughs> but in that podcast, we also feature our DJ mixes, just so that you're not looking for everything in so many different places. You can find our DJ mixes and our Rebel Tone podcast in one place on Spotify. Uh, woke up a rebel DJ mixes and Rebel Tone podcast. You can find us on Mixcloud if you do not use Spotify to listen to both our mixes and the podcast. Mixcloud.com slash woke up a rebel. If you don't want to use that, then tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> you can listen to our beats. On soundcloud.com slash woke up a rebel. And yeah, that's our plug. Hope you guys and ladies enjoyed this podcast. Really enjoyed talking about it. If there's any ladies in listening that want to get into the reggaeton scene, now you know what you got to com- not compete with, but you got to know what to expect. You're going to expect a lot what you would expect in any scenario where you go to where there's a lot of males. Even if you walk into a room, with a bunch of guys, you already know what to expect. So imagine that at a with the, when the stakes are higher. But you got this. You got this. You can do it. If these ladies paved the way, you can do it. If they did it, you can do it. Right? Exactly. All right. So thank you, Aisha, for joining me on this lovely conversation. No, I was glad to be a part of the conversation. Well, you know, I was just really hearing the information you have to give like the rest of our audience but it was really great to you know learn about all these females that you know I haven't heard before and how the three main ones that stuck out like the ones who did the voices and a lot of the songs and then E.B. Queen herself you know paving the way it's cool to learn that information yeah, it was uh, fun researching it, right? So check out Glory, Evie Queen, Jenny La Sexy Voz, the leader of the movement of the Neo Perreo scene, Tomasa Del Real. Tread carefully when you're looking into Neo Perreo people, especially if you're hypersensitive to uh, uh, religion. I feel like by you mentioning it again, you're just really trying to edge people towards listening to it. It's not bad music. I'm not saying it's bad music, but I'm just saying if you're kind of leaning towards more of like, you know, we're, especially for, you know, Latino kids and, and, um, you know, Caribbean people, you know, like Jamaicans and stuff, like we're more on the Christian Catholic side. So when you see something as extreme of what you'll see when you look into Neo Perreo, you might think that there's something very dark about it, you know, but hey, to each their own, right? Don't judge a book by its cover. So thank you for joining us on Rebel Tone Podcast, episode number three, The Ladies of Reggaeton.